That's good. Is this good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Wasn't that amazing? Yeah. Doesn't it feel good to be out here? <laughs> Isn't it great to have the church out of the building? Right? Yes. I think it's always good to be reminded that church is not a building. That the church is not a place. The church is the people. Yes. It's the congregation. It's the gathering. And so wherever two or three are gathered, Jesus says, there mm -hmm. am I with them. And so I am so excited and thrilled to be in church today. God's first sanctuary, is it not? Yes. yes. Anyway, uh, you guys look really good. And so I wanted to take a picture of you guys because I couldn't do it while we were going. But I thought since I'm up here, I might as well do this. Uh, good. Now smile. I'm going to get these guys over here. The... Amen. Amen. Sorry. Sorry. Because if I don't do this now, after the service is over, it's going to be chaos. And so that's why I need to do this now. But um, thank you for indulging me. Um, oh. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to a people called Methodist <laughs> here at the Twin Chimney Farm. Welcome to Central United Methodist Church. My name is David Lee, and I have the privilege of serving here as one of the pastors. And I want you to know that, that your presence here today is a blessing to us. And I hope and pray that this time that we can have together can be a blessing for you as well. And we pray and hope that this community of faith, whether it's in a building or out in the woods like this, I want you to know that I want you to, I want you to, <clears throat> I want you to know that this is a safe place for you, that, that here, you can follow Jesus, make disciples, and transform the world. And I want, um, I'm so grateful that we can be worshiping here together. Uh, I want to thank again, again, the Aries. Thank you for being so generous and being so hospitable. It's almost like we can't even get the words out before he's like, yes, yes, yes. When do you want to do it? We'll do it. Where, where do you want it? And so, so grateful for this, their hospitality, their generosity, just willingness to give and serve and help our church and so thank you for that uh, i want to thank emma and her friends i feel like i don't know is that a name of a band i don't i feel like <laughs> emma and her friends i feel like i mean before long they'll be taking this on the road right and so thank you again i think this is probably a service that many of us probably look forward to this is like a highlight this is like christmas in the summer for us i think and so thank you thank you for your friends who have traveled too and for being here to help us worship today thank you Thank you. Um, okay, so today, if, if you've been with us at Central, you will know that we've been doing a series on the life of David, right? On the life of David. And so we've been looking at, uh, we've been looking at David as the shepherd boy, right? And the unlikely people that sometimes God seems to choose, right? I am one of those unlikely people that God has chosen for some reason that I still don't know why. <laughs> Um, we've seen David as the warrior who, who, who went forth to slay the giants in his life. We also have the ability. We also have uh, the faith that can allow us to slay the giants in our lives. We also got to see David deal with adversity as he dealt with Saul, who betrayed him, stabbed him in the back. So what do you do? What do you do when, when you're stabbed in the back? And we got to see how David lived out his faith in the midst of that kind of context. And he looked to God. He poured himself out to God and allowed God to be his protector. We looked at David and his friendship with Jonathan and the characteristics of what friendship in the Christian world, in the Christian sense, looks like. And so we're grateful for John as he shared how, how, that, how we can be a hero too, just like David was to Jonathan. But David was not a perfect man. He had many flaws, actually, and we got to hear about David and his affair with Bathsheba. And we looked at what a tangled web we weave, right, when we first practice to deceive. And so he was not perfect by any means. And, and so we got to see the many sides, the many lives that David lived 
He got to live many lives. And I feel like that explains us too, right? We're not just one thing, right? We are many things. We can live many different lives. We're like onions, right? We have layers. We have layers. And I want you to know that maybe those gifts, maybe those urgings is what God has placed on your heart. And so seek it out. Don't just be pigeonholed to, well, I do taxes for a living, so I can't do anything else. No. God has gifted you with many gifts and wondrous opportunities that you ought to live into. There are layers to us, and God is calling you to live into that, just as David lived into many identities in his life. We also can be many things, many things. And today we're going to be finishing up the series on David with probably the most beloved passage in the Bible, the 23rd Psalm. I'm sure some of you, if not many of you, have it memorized, right? And the translation that you have memorized is the King James Version, right? It's, it's almost like it's blasphemous not to have it in that version for some reason. And so what I'd like for us to do as we begin this time of hearing God's word is I want you to take your bulletin out and stop using it as a fan right now. And, and I want you to turn to the back because I, want, I thought it would be nice for us to be able to read it together, to read God's word together, some a passage in the Bible that we find so meaningful in our lives, the 23rd Psalm in the King James Version. You guys ready? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I know we're very familiar with this passage. And I'm sure we've read it. I'm sure we've recited it many times throughout the course of our lives. Many of us, I'm sure, if you grew up in the church. Uh, but sometimes I think when you're so familiar with something, right, it almost like you, you almost don't know what it's actually saying. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, it's that good thing. And so I want to ask you, after having read this passage together, what do you think is the overwhelming message of this song? What is David trying to say about God? Who is this God? What is this God like? How is this God in relation to me? What is the overwhelming message of this song, the 23rd Psalm? And so I want us to kind of reflect on that together. Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. I hear God giving us rest. Rest. <coughs> Renewal. It's been a long and hard journey, and we need renewal. Not just to be back on our feet, but we also need to be restored. God provides restoration in our lives. And not only that, he won't leave you there. He will lead you onto right paths to live in a right way, to live in a way that is honoring to God with yourself, with those around you, and the world. The right paths he will lead you. Even walking through the darkest valley, the darkest times of your life, Is it an illness? Is it damaged or even broken relationships? Maybe it's a, a death of a loved one. Or whatever this dark 
darkest valley may be for you, you have nothing to fear. Because you know whose you are and who is with you through it all. God is with you. Thou art with me. God is with us. That's how we can know. <coughs> Despite the hardships, we do not have to fear because we know whose we are and who carries us when we're not able to. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Rods and staffs typically don't speak to me of comfort, right? They, they make me think of switches that people used to get to discipline and punish. So what is he talking about? Why is it so comforting for David, for the psalmist, for this follower of God? A shepherd's rod and staff are used typically to lead the sheep, to defend the sheep from, pre from, from, from predators, to, to guide wandering sheep back into the fold. So I think of these as guidelines, guidelines of our faith, our spiritual practices, like spending time in God's word, like presenting yourself before God in prayer and just opening yourself up. By gathering in worship, whether they be in buildings or in nature like this, by cultivating friendships, spiritual friendships, by having mentors in our lives who speak God's life into us, by giving ourselves in service for others. These are the guidelines that keep us in check. These are the guidelines that, that, that guide us and lead us back from wandering too far off the reservation. So as you practice your faith, right? I wanna emphasize, practice your faith. As you work your faith, this is not some warm shower that you just let the water wash over you. No, when you get in there, you gotta actively clean, right? <laughs> and so, you need to work your faith. You need to practice your faith. You need to engage in practices that's going to allow you to open yourself to God, to, to help you become more like God and less like the person that you are. Oftentimes being selfish and, and jealous and petty. But how can we be more loving and compassionate and forgiving just as God is with us? Even in the presence of mine enemies, when I am surrounded by those who would seek to harm me, who would slander me and desire my downfall, even delighting in my downfall, God sets a table for me right in their midst. God sets a feast, a banquet, and lifts me up to celebrate me and to delight in me, even while all the craziness is around. As I turn my attention to God, he sets a table for me right in the midst of that. God anoints me with oil, like soothing balm, protecting, healing, and giving me peace of mind and of life, peace in my relationships and peace with the world. And so my cup overflows, not because God has removed the hardships or stopped the mouths of those who would harm me, but despite it all, my life is full. And I see through God's eyes that my life is abundant. There is abundance rising out of me. And God will ensure that goodness and mercy will abound all the more in me will follow after me because I will dwell, because I am dwelling now in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the 23rd Psalm. So let me ask again, what is the overwhelming message of this song for you? If this were a letter sent by God to you, what might God trying to be telling you at this moment in spite of the circumstances and evidence to the contrary? 
What is the word that God is trying to speak to you? This is the word that spoke to me. God loves you. God is for you, for your good, for your welfare, not to do you harm, but that it may go well with you so that you may want for nothing, so that you will be satisfied wholly, entirely, completely in God who is with you even now at this moment still, despite it all, everything that we have done to try to push God away. That is the message for me, the overwhelming message that God wants to say to me and to you, even now, at this moment, still, despite all your efforts to push God away. This is the 23rd Psalm. For me, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is why it is good news because it is good for me and it's good for you. That is why, that is, this is what I believe God and faith and life is all about. Understanding that, that truth and trying our best to know and to love this God with all of our hearts, all of our minds, our strength and our soul. That was Jesus' answer to the question, what is the greatest commandment? But if you know that passage, you know that wasn't the only part of his answer. No, he continued. He wasn't done answering. He continued. He said, and, meaning this isn't just for you. This isn't only about you, but it's for everybody. Everybody. Do you have a body? It's for you. Do you have a body? It's for you. You have a body, so it must be for you. It is for everybody. It is for everybody. And so the second greatest commandment is like it, Jesus said. Like the first, which is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And by doing this, you will show God that you got that message. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.